right, hi, welcome back. Attorney Steve Andre, and welcome to another exciting episode of Litigation Whiteboard. I hope you guys are all doing great today. Today we are talking about privileges, okay? Now, this is something that can come up, usually in a case that's going to start in your depositions, oftentimes, where somebody is going to take your deposition. They're going to ask you a question. You're going to feel squirmish about answering it. You're going to say, there's, there's something wrong here. Maybe it's because you have a privilege not to respond, a privilege not to respond. So without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. All right, here we are. We're back. Okay. So sorry about the lighting situation. I had to replace a couple of my lights. So you got this little ring around the ring around the rosy here. So I apologize for that. But we're going to talk here today about privileges. In general, I'm going to be talking about the California Evidence Code. Now, every state's going to have their own rules, okay? So this, but we're talking in California. I'm licensed California and Arizona. General legal information only, not legal advice, but some of the privileges that exist in California. Now, this is not an exclusive list. This is probably only a third or a fourth of all the privileges that are out there. There are tons of privileges, okay? You always want to hire a lawyer that knows the privileges, but I'm going to go over some of the main ones for you, the main ones that may pop up on a bar exam, things like that. But let's take a look here, okay? So first of all is the attorney-client privilege. Let me grab my green pen here. I just love these new pens. I have these art line, these art line pens. Fantastic, nice and thick. It's hard to find a really thick pen on the market, but I found these and I love them. So um, but let's talk about number one, attorney-client privilege. Okay, so that's where you're sitting in a deposition and somebody says, what did you and your attorney talk about? Okay, well, that's privileged. You and your attorney have confidential communications. Those are privileged. You do not have to answer that question. And you're, uh, the lawyer, the one defending the person who's having their deposition being taken, would assert, objection, objection. Hold on, client. I'm going to advise you not to answer that question. That question is protected under the attorney-client privilege, okay? And so the person who asks the question may go like, oh, huh? wow, okay, all right. And so your witness, you would want to instruct not to answer. Now, if you don't raise these issues in your deposition, you may waive them, okay? The old-fashioned saying in law is raise it or waive it. Raise it or waive it. So you want to be you want to be listening. This is why depositions are pretty hard, by the way. Uh, I love them. I find them very challenging because you got to stay mentally focused the whole time. Listen to every question and pounce on it before your client talks. Sometimes your client gets so in the groove that they just want to start answering. If they answer, move to strike it. Move to strike it from the record. Okay. So anyway, attorney-client communications can be privileged. Okay. Now bear in mind, there's also exceptions to these rules. Um, there's things where you're trying to per help perpetrate a crime or a fraud, those kinds of things. So there are exceptions to a lot of different rules. Some of these are qualified privileges, meaning you have the privilege, but if you abuse them, you lose them. Abuse, you lose. Okay, but let's take a look. Spousal communications. Okay, so I'm talking to my, my wife one night and I say, you know, I ran the red light and I hit that guy and uh, I'm being sued in a personal injury case and they want to call my wife as a witness and she can say, no, nope, um, I'm going to assert my spousal communication privilege and privileges against confident, confidential communications between spouses. So that's a privilege. You want to look for these. People call it two different privileges, okay? So you want to look into these. But spousal communications, why? They don't want to force my wife to get up there and testify against attorney Steve. That would be horrible. So you have these privileges for that reason. Patient physician, this is a good one. Okay, so you go into your doctor. Your, your doctor asks you a lot of things. Hey, you know... Uh, you know, do you smoke? Do you smoke cigarettes? Do you drink alcohol? You know, what's what's going on? Where'd you get the bruise? Oh, somebody pushed you down the stairs. Oh boy, you know. So you expect these records to be confidential. You go to the, your doctor. You assume everything's going to be confidential. Then one day you you sue somebody. You're a plaintiff in an action, and you sue somebody, and you say, "I'm suing you for emotional distress. I'm suing you for injuries. I'm suing you for this and that." And they say, okay, well, first thing we're going to do is go get all your medical records. And you say, well, whoa, whoa, wait a second. That's all privileged. That's all privileged. I saw it on Attorney Steve videos. If you put your issue at, if you put your medical or health issue 
on the table, if you put it at issue, as we say, then it's not privileged anymore. But any other time, other times, you're generally going to be looking at a privileged communication between you and your doctor, okay? Another one is the psychotherapist, okay? Uh, another similar one over here, let's just get to that one right now, the sexual assault victim and the counselor, okay? You're talking to the sexual assault victim, you tell them everything that happened. They can't call the counselor to trial and say, what did she say? What did he tell you? What did he tell you? Okay, privileged. Raise it. Raise it or wave it. Got it right here. Assert it or wave it. Strike it. If it accidentally gets on the record, move to strike it off the record. Okay. What else do we have? Clergy per penitent. This is one I always find interesting. And now it's kind of, I find it very interesting. There are websites online. Religion is not really regulated. It's not really a regulated industry. So there's people where you can get ordained online i think the one that comes to mind i think is a universal life church you can get ordained online and you can pick your title you can call yourself an archbishop a priest or whatever it's religion okay people can start religions all the time so here if a clergy and is speaking with a penitent that would be someone that says please forgive me please i've done so many wrong things you know Look up your definitions, look up your case law, but these conversations can be privileged, can be privileged, okay? So again, the, to me, a big question is, what exactly constitutes a clergy? Do you have to be ordained? Do you have to go through a four-year school? Can you just buy a card online and say, I'm getting into religion now and I want to, I want to be an archbishop? These are important questions, okay? So if you have a case that deals with these kinds of issues, you're going to want to research that in advance so you know what your argument's going to be. If you don't answer, they say, well, you're, not going, to, you're going to instruct your client not to answer. I'm going to do a motion to compel. I'm going to move to compel. And if you already have your case law, you can say, well, listen, here's my case law that we're going to be relying on. Have fun, okay? Have fun. So that's the kinds of things you want to do for your depot preposition. We have reporters. Here's another one, big one, social media day. Everybody's a blogger, a reporter. Everyone's got their sources, their sources. But you always go, what are their sources? Are they real? Are they a friend of theirs? Is it somebody that's actually there in the White House on Capitol Hill? Who is the source? But the, the law protects these sources because we want information to come out. We want that big, nasty, dirty secret leak. Okay, and we want to protect the reporters. Again, it's a qualified privilege. There may be times, I have Q there, there may be times when you need to say, sorry. But I remember on my uh, California bar exam, they had a thing where they locked a reporter up in jail and um, he asserted the privilege and the question was discuss, <laughs> discuss. So there you have it. Um, one final, or two final ones. I'm going to go here, privacy. Now this one's kind of a little bit trickier. There are so many privacy laws on the book. There's your, your, your uh, movies you rent. There's your privacy in your financial records, your tax returns, your bank records. There's all kinds of privacy things, okay? Cable privacy. Um, I mean, you name it, okay? There's privacy for everything. But not all privacy um, claims are going to be deemed valid. So again, another one you want to research. But privacy can be an objection. How does this work? You say, sir... Let me see your tax returns. How much did you make last year on your 2019 tax returns? I made, whoop, object, object. That is privileged information. Uh, we are not going to discuss that today. That is a privacy right every California has under the California Constitution, okay? Things like that, that's how you're going to do it. Raise it or wave it, baby. Raise it or wave it. Final one that I'm going to go over, the Fifth Amendment. Now, this pops up every now and then in a case where it may be a fraud case, okay, and I've seen plenty of fraud cases, um, but say somebody just completely defrauded somebody, and um, basically, you're being asked questions, you're the defendant, your attorney's representing you, and you go, oh, I can't tell, I can't tell them what I did, I, I forged signatures, and that's a crime, and I, I did all these other dastardly things, I, you know, I, I did all these kinds of things, that's, you know, that's not good. So you don't want to be answering to those because this is under oath. Your depositions are under oath. Uh, I forged the title. 
You do that, it's under oath, you don't change it. Usually you have 30 days to change your answers. You don't change it, now you just put, and you just said, here you go, criminal court, take this deposition, try me with the crime of forgery, I just admitted it. You know, bingo. So you have a Fifth Amendment right. This is a right against self-incrimination. For you law students out there, this is made applicable to the states via the 14th Amendment, the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. So the Fifth Amendment. Now, this is a little bit tricky because, um, you know, basically this can be done on a question-by-question -question basis. And I've sat in on very painful depositions go all day long and you say, well, where were you on the day of the 4th? My client invokes his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Uh, I'm advised my client not to answer the question. You just go like 100 times. So it's question by question by question by question by question. If somebody really wants to move to compel a response, they can go to court and say, judge, come on. That's not, that. this is crazy. I asked him what is where he went to high school. Come on, that's not, that's not self-incrimination. So there you have it, folks. This is a general look at privileges. Again, this is general information only. This is not an exclusive list. There's probably 20, 50 times more privileges. So do your privileges, check them out in your case, check your state law, know what you're doing when you get in on that deposition, and you'll be ready to make that assertion to raise it so you don't waive it and move to strike it if, if accidentally your witness jumps the gun on you, okay? Attorney Steve Honor, and I hope you've liked this episode of Litigation Whiteboard. We're working hard for you. Stay safe out there. If you need to hire, retain legal counsel, civil litigation, California, Arizona, copyright, intellectual property, those kinds of things, you know where to find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. I got to run. Have a great day. I hope this has been helpful. Bye now.